Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your Mechanical Turk with Severe Fatigue Syndrome. So I've been extremely ill for like a week-ish now with a whole bunch of bad flare-up-y things and check the terminals are going up. well obviously we'll check the terminals. That's law, you don't pass up free law. Lady we found here. Body's gone but her trace is with us. Uh, yeah, so I've actually been like really really ill for a while. I even missed an uh, uploading episode the other day because of that and um, so yeah like I've been saying I have been just ill and I'm super spacey and having bad fatigue which means I only get about five minutes of alertness at any one time hopefully that won't impact this too bad uh, I meant to say this before we got started but we're coming to the end of this one my next let's play will be uh, Dishonored um, should be pretty good I hope you come and join me for that in I might take a, like a week's break or something in between this one and that one, just to recover a little bit. I don't know. Uh, that's... I guess it never really occurred to me, but these little announcements end up in these episodes for po for posterity. I wonder if they're irritating to people who go back and watch old series. Um, anyway. This isn't a vote. It's a choice. So yeah, uh, Cloudbank has switched over to the one-man-one-vote system of government, and uh, it seems that Red, as the last remaining man, has the vote. A lot of people pick Placid Snowfall here because it fits the kind of austere, quiet ending to the game, but I've always had a fondness for Gentle Rain. You read my mind. So, as I've said before, Supergiant, as a studio, as a creative group, have this interesting thematic obsession with the concept of, you know, circularity and cycles and returning to where you came from, and endless loops. They want a tag team. Uh, this is even clearer in this game than in some of their other games, as you have things like this um, almost joking return where we go to the, you know, we finish in the place as we started. We even have characters saying the same things again. Or things that, you know, meaningfully echo things they said a long time in the past. No, you don't. Wouldn't want to wind up like them. Hello World said as part of, you know, the... Okay, let's go. ...ironic joy of having survived a deadly event. Now here, replaced with the ironic vibe of talking about the literal end of the world. There's the alley. Hey, look. Begin. This is Royce Brackett of the Camerata, communicating via proxy. I am calling for a truce. See, I'd very much like for the process to, well, stop doing what it's doing. And my conjecture is you'd very much like that too. Assuming I am right, then come along and we'll sort this out. Maybe we can sort this out. We'll see about that. I've praised the voice talent in this game before, and I do think that they just do a great job across the board. Pretty much every voiced component of this game, all, well gee, all like both of them, well, Asher talks as well, all three of them are very characterful, but also quite unusual voices. It's not the kind of voices that are the ones you hear commonly as um, accents and styles of intonation and so on uh, in video games. Could have sworn I left my body right here. I, I thought he would have more to say. Oh well. The transistor. What can it do? What can it really do? Well, um, it can build a bridge, for example, that's something. People want a bridge to Fairview, sure. Why not? It's settled. Have a beautiful new bridge. It's good for more than just bridges, of course. Why, it can make just about anything happen. Really. 
So over this sequence of the game, um, Royce really does just kind of explain everything that's happening to you in pretty un unambiguous terms. Accessible only by air or sea, Cloudbank's most secluded and beautiful getaway deserves to be seen by all. With sufficient support, this petition would create a walking bridge to connect the southeast edge of Goldhawk Bay to Fairview Island. Fairview would be just a relaxing seaside stroll away. Additional traffic by foot and small motor vehicles expected to have a negligible impact on local commerce. This better work. Although it doesn't actually ask you for your wow. vote. It just establishes that there is a desire to figure out whether or not people want a bridge to Fairview. It doesn't actually petition the people, and the only people left in the city are you and Royce Brackett, so... Um, I don't think that's an intention intentional thing, I think that's just a slight breakdown of people thinking about the implications of the theme, but that's not quite... That's not, you know, really relevant to every, anything. Also, we come back to this kind of um, much more genericized statue style. Uh, it's a lot less like the naturalistic deco stylings and leaning a little bit more towards the um, like platonic archetypical shapes you get in uh, the deco art you see in a couple of places in the game. Let's go meet Royce. Of course I say that, then notice that the lamps are very definitely still Art Nouveau. The process can't be stopped. Can't be stopped. However, the process could be impelled to simply go away, take its business elsewhere, and we'll be well enough alone. As for the town, we'll have ourselves a blank canvas, and as for the transistor, we'll have ourselves a brush. I love this kind of constant return to the idea of this as being a painter's game. The art is painterly, the world is painterly. The blank slate to which it is returned, the fundament from which a new universe can be carved, is even referred to as a blank canvas. Asha Kendrell, age 28, gender M. Selections writing and valuation. Reasons cited, self-expression. Trace status recorded. I feel like I read this out before. Did I read I can't have done because I didn't have it fully unlocked. Is this a... Hmm, okay, this might be something... I might have got confused by the fact I'm maintaining two separate files. Uh, oh, let's just go. Asher Kendrell. Most children learn to stop asking why, but Asher Kendrell never outgrew it. His hunger for knowledge and eagerness to spread it made him a prolific writer who enjoyed a career as a culture and current events editor for OVC. When Mr. Kendrell was not busy reporting, he occupied himself studying the history of his city. But the deeper he delved, the more frustrated he became with the dead ends and contradictions. The facts simply did not add up, so he started piercing together the unwritten history of Cloudbank. He conducted interviews with vulnerable members of society, those who willingly worked past a retirement age or could speak firsthand about the past. The most remarkable among them was an administrator. Mr. Kendrell was struck by the administrator's wisdom and depth of experience, and the two shared a passion for seeking the truth of things, and for much more as it turned out. One day, the administrator took Mr. Kendrell aside to a place unlike any he'd seen before, and revealed to him something he never could have imagined. With it, the administrator said, together they could learn so much, about the past and the future, as long as Mr. Kendrell was willing to keep it a secret. Mr. Kendrell accepted without a second thought. The administrator was much more to him than just a source at this point. Mr. Kendrell continued writing for OVC, now with an ulterior motive having joined the administrator's inner circle. The administrator needed someone like Asher to keep, help keep a low profile. Someone who could speak directly to the hearts and minds of the population and truly understand their needs. That way they could conduct their work in service of the people. Cloudbank would enter a new era. I definitely... I finished that one, right? Designation Clucker. This one is rather inconspicuous, even nonchalant, so very timid in its disposition. Though its appendages, that is to say its legs, they will need a closer look. Why are they not rigid? Fleshy, almost, appearing natural in shape and texture, which strikes me as very odd. The process it is big on self-improvement, that I know, but I do not know if copying the way we mill about, the way we wander, I don't know if that qualifies. 
In any case, this is a newer model and has to be. Has to be able to traverse denser environments undetected and quite literally lead the way for its associates. It's a bit like an explorer. Roll Ranger. Features ballistic launcher, all terrain locomotion, and disrupt and disruption and disruption system. Vulnerabilities far sighted rangefinder. Preferences biped emulation shooting contests. So at this point, as I mentioned, we really do start to get. Uh, so this is Fairview, farther from town than I thought. Clearer answers. All of Cloudbank's gonna wind up like this. Where are we supposed to? Oh. Trying times. Very trying times these days. Grand, the other state. Gonna have that me now, haven't they? Just you and me now, isn't it? You and me and the transistor. There's something weird about his face on the monitor because he does not look to me anything like um, the face we've seen in all of the uh, cutscene art depicting the Camerata. Or his portrait in his yeah, function. I got nothing. We had a saying, which goes, when everything changes, nothing changes. You see? When everything changes, nothing changes. But all this, this isn't what we had in mind. So everything changes, nothing changes is really interesting to me. It's quite important. It is, of course, the motivation of the Camerata, this idea that Change is irrelevant. Change is meaningless unless you know what you're changing from. Without a history to have changed from, the change is both pointless and not meaningful. However, that comes from an engineer who is frustrated with no longer having, or never having, any kind of like long-term recognition for his work because it just vanishes back into the ether whenever the people decide they're bored of it. Which I guess you could think is a pretty clear um, feeling for a creative individual to uh, put through into their work. However, it doesn't necessarily tally with the other themes. Um, I don't necessarily think that that's a frustration expressed by the author through the medium of their work. Town isn't looking any better from this angle. It also, to me, evokes a concept from uh, game design and like game There's software design. To something. Um, involving procedural generation, which I think is quite relevant for the fact that this is a, a digitally themed society, which is uh, namely the infinite oatmeal problem. So there's this issue where, um... To Fairview. In, uh... procedural generation of, um, like, game areas, game situations, uh, game designs, you have this problem where essentially what happens is instead of uh, designing a level what you do is you design a system that designs levels so then you have a vast number of levels but it's very much as if you built a system to generate bowls of oatmeal it doesn't matter if you generate 10,000 different bowls of oatmeal they will all be completely unique but to someone glancing at them they will just look like oatmeal their uniqueness is irrelevant because of the fundamental similarity. There's only so many differences you can make between one bowl of oatmeal and another. Uh, and this is very clear in um, a lot of modern roguelikes or roguelites because <laughs> that um, video essay that I'm always writing and never finishing about the taxonomy of the roguelike is, um, I guess, cladistics of the rogue roguelike. It, well, uh, I'll come back to that some other time. Anyway, um, you see levels designed, which are just fundamentally identical to one another. 
the pieces are rearranged, but you very quickly notice the patterns, which means that ultimately they all seem kind of samey. It can't generate new visual assets, it can't generate new ways to design levels, it can only design new iterations of the pre-existing designs. The process is just doing a job. Doing its job, though I much preferred it when the process did mine. But our old friend Grant, I mean, I let him, I let him borrow it. Well, anyway, here we are. So, um, it could be kind of a stretch, but you could Go even argue that this kind of, um... We knew we'd have our detractors. These kinds of components being present in the themes of this game is even a commentary on the use of procedural generation. Especially considering that this is a game which is very carefully handcrafted, where every what single moment... ...was wrong in the traditional sense. I mean, yeah, if you know something's wrong, you probably shouldn't do it. That doesn't. That seems like it could go without saying, Royce. Come on. You're in a long tradition of scientists doing evil things for what they think are the right reasons. More. So, like I said, I think it's a stretch to call it a kind of an intentional commentary on the use of um, procedural generation uh, as opposed to traditional Solid. level design. Um. But I also think that that's, if, even if it's unintentional, it's still a valid reading. I also want to point out that these guys are supposed to be the end game enemies. They're supposed to be the toughest, most difficult things to fight. I'm pretty sure this game doesn't have difficulty levels. If it does, I'm pretty sure I'm not playing on easy. And yet, I haven't even taken a hit from these. I'm not like, like I know I'm good at video games, but I have not like, been intentionally min-maxing this system and I am not choosing these enemies, I am using the most basic mechanics present in the game. Do those things explode by themselves or do I need to kill them? That was rough. Still, the presence of this enemy, the man, is interesting for reasons that I will talk about next episode because, uh... Depending on editing, I think we are done for today. I actually have a lot I want to say about this space and how it relates contextually to previous spaces. So um, let's just run through that really quickly now. As we, as this world approaches its fundamental state, the original like matter from which this world was completely crafted, it actually takes on religious overtones. This is quite interesting to me because it's reflecting a kind of um, a conception. As we gain the power of a god to rewrite the world as we see fit, the world itself takes on the styling of religious architecture. I don't think that this is intended to be some kind of literal thing in the world. I think this is supposed to evoke a particular feeling. As we get closer and closer to the end of the game, we get closer and closer to the opportunity to attain godhood. And therefore that world itself reflects that nature as we understand it as a Western, you know, audience playing a Western game or a Western made game as a kind of Christian divine architecture. Marble columns, stained glass windows. But there's also a nice little detail, which these diagrams on the floor, they're the patterns we've been seeing repeated throughout the game. However, at this stage, they start to look like circuitry diagrams, which again reflects the um, digital theming of the, of the setting. However, there's a nice little detail, which these particular ones, while they're used as parts of the design to evoke circuitry, the basic image of them very strongly reflects the way that neurotransmitters in the human nervous system are often depicted in science te textbooks. I think that these uh, elements together are intended to kind of subconsciously invoke uh, an idea of, of the digital and the physical reality of a human life being kind of inextricably intertwined. Um, so that's enough of me like just wanking on forever about <laughs> visual themes. So that's going to be all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one tweet micro reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.